So what does the Bible say? When I knock on the door, if you open it, I'll come in and eat together with you. So don't wait for him to knock on the door. You should open your door and say, Jesus, come. Just try it, then it's going to be more powerful. So as I said earlier, so starting from the 7th for 8 days, Hanukkah is starting. So, the, so you guys know what Hanukkah is, right? So the Greek people, so when they took over the Israel temple, you know, they put their own gods there. Like pigs. So to Jewish, you know, pigs are unclean animals, so, so they cannot touch the pigs. But then they serve to the pigs and all of that. So many people gave up saying we didn't have any power to fight against. But one person said they cannot endure this. So he fought and overcame and chased the enemy out. And he cleansed the temple. And the oil, he was trying to change out the oil. It took eight days to make the new clean purified oil. It takes eight days. So there was only one left, so then the light had to go out, but by faith, they cleansed out the temple, and then within eight days, they cleansed the oil, and then they went in. And for eight days, that one light didn't go out, and it was maintained the whole time. That's why it's called Hanukkah. So the menorah has seven, which represents the seven spirits, but the Hanukkah is eight, so this, we do eight days. I think it's better because we can clean up our temple in our heart. So for eight days, it's an end time. Let God's grace be upon us. Amen. So God, in this time, everyone is listening to your word. Let your life and their eyes be opened. Let their purpose in their life change. And let their foundation be built up on your word. And they can live as a person you want them to be. So I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you guys like to plan out your life? Who likes to make plans? So whenever you do something, you have to make a plan, and then you want to live according to that plan, and then in the end, you kind of look back and see if you it went according to that plan or not. Raise your hand. Do you guys like... How about everyone else? Michelle, you like to plan out your life? Or oh, Micah? No friend? If I make a friend, I don't need a friend. Do you like to make a plan or you don't like to make a plan? Sometimes. So the problem is sometimes. I will never say sometimes. I will say always. So consider. So some people, they don't make any plans at all because they don't. They shouldn't make any plans so that even if they fail later, they don't regret about if they make a mistake later on. So what kind of person are you? Do you like to make plans and to see how it went or do you not like to make plans at all? So Pastor Kim really likes to make plans. New Year plan. So at the end of the year, even if it's messed up, you know, he makes a new plan again for next year. The problem is, in the December, if you made a plan, when you come to December, you have to look back, right? Did I live accordingly? But there's another problem. What do people think? If they fail, what do they think? So, uh, so anyways, it's not going to work out this year. It's not going to be restored. So they already give up everything. So let me just eat, drink, let's just do whatever, let's defile ourselves, and let's start again next year. And then there's people who get messed up again. So they say, let's just defile ourselves, and then let's just do it next year again. But then when they start the next year, they're more messed up. So what about God? Does God have a plan, or he doesn't have a plan, he just lets you do whatever? Which one is he? The God you know, does he have a plan? Or does he not want a plan? You just live according to what you want to do. How do you know he has a plan? If God has a plan, then you have to become a person who plans as well. Who has a plan? Do you want to be like Jesus? Really? 
Then you have to make your own plan too. You have to make a plan too. So you have to have a goal, you have to have a plan. So many people, they don't have a plan or purpose, that's why they, they wander around a lot. The devil knows this too. That's why from the beginning, he wants you to become a failure from the beginning, so he keeps giving you, telling you lies. So my family is consists of losers, there's nothing to look at. So they make you think that. The devil makes you think that, so that you cannot do, you cannot get up again, you cannot move forward. So how many people live in that kind of repeated cycle? So Nina has been breaking through a lot these days. So before she gave up easily, but these days she's not giving up easily. Why? Because she asked her helper. And then the helping spirit was downloaded upon me, and the many angels were surrounded around her. And then she helped her with, the angels helped her with her studying. And then she was connected to, you know, one of the best A students. So it's very rare for someone who studies well to come down to someone who doesn't study well and say, I'll help you. So, you know, pe even if you go look for them, they don't really like to help people who can't study well. Have you been to Seoul University, the number one university in Korea? They don't try to get along with each other because they want if they want to become number one, they have to be, have a lot of secrets. They have to maintain what they know. But if God says to do so, and whether you're the best or not, without making it known, if someone who's really good at it, you know, makes it known that they're helping, then it's better to not come to them. But God sent someone who was an A student to Nina, and it helped Nina. And on the project day, even, you know, she was able to uh, turn in the project on time. Otherwise, the, pro the professor even extended the deadline. There's no professor like that. So when he was a teaching assistant, he knows there's no barely any professors like that. What professor for a student extends the deadline? But then all the paperwork is going to be delayed for the professor side because they have to report it, record it, but it's going to be delayed later. There's no professor that does that. So only by God's grace this is possible. So if God makes plans, then you have to think about it. You shouldn't just spend December. You have to examine your life and then start all start again, start new. And then to God, even if you have one second remaining in your life, even if you have one second remaining, God, if God downloads in that one second. He can completely reverse your life in that one second. So if you're with God, even if you're before you die, if you're with God, then the resurrection power and everything can be restored. So he doesn't give up. That's why he doesn't give up. Even if everything's messed up. So let's go to the Bible. Isaiah 5. So what kind of picture does God have? From verse 1. Now let me sing to my well-beloved the song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine. He built a tower in its midst and also made a wine press on it, so he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, please, between me and my vineyard, what more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? And now please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it shall be burned and break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or dug, but they shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah are his pleasant plant. He looked for justice, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry for help.
그들에게 정의를 바라셨더니 도리어 포악이요 그들에게 고기를 바라셨더니 도리어 부르짖음이었다. Okay, 자 상징적으로 포도나무. So, you know, he considered the vineyard as the people that visited the believers. So, did God give us the best thing, or He didn't give us the good thing? So, what they say in the Bible, He gave us the choicest vine. He gave us the best vine, the best grape, the best. He gave us the best choice. But the problem is, what is the problem? You don't think of yourself like that. God gave you the best life. He He gave you the life that will show His glory. He gave you His blessed best plan. But the problem is, you don't count yourself as that. Then your life is going to be broken. It's going to be messed up, and it's going to make wild grapes. The wild vine or wild grapes. So then God, who gave, so on the day of judgment, He's going to be angry and judge on the last day because we messed up the good thing He gave us. So if you live your life as saying, I am the best one, you say to yourself, God created me, I am the best. I have the best, the most valuable He created me like that. Do you believe it? Really? Really? Are you sure? If you believe that you declare, I am the best in the world because God created me. I maintain. I maintain. Magnify. You are glorified. Do my life to the God, my life to the Lord. More choice to buy. The most choicest vine. Finest. Finest. How great of a blessing is this? In your life, this is God's picture for you. So what did Jesus say? He is the hope of glory. So Jesus coming inside of us is the hope of glory. That means He wants to glorify our life. So He made us into this best valuable thing, but we don't know this. That's why we sin, we mess it up, and we're broken. But in the Old Testament, it says He's going to judge us. But in the New Testament, it says Jesus is going to restore. In order to restore this, He came back. And He became our hope of glory. He put Himself into us. And in our life, made us new. He's going to make our life eternal, glorified. So no one can look down on you. No one can ignore you. So because of the name of Jesus that comes out of your mouth, God will be with you. And He will change your life. If that's the case, if you're someone who received Jesus Christ, then you have to have a clear purpose or goal. So Him to us, when He gave us a new life, we have He had a clear purpose and goal that He wanted us for. He wanted for us, but many people don't have this picture in them. So let's try right now. So to you. If I ask you what kind of person you want to be in the future, what are you going to answer? Caleb. Good morning. It's a time to worship. Not a bad time, okay? Wake up. I did. Thank you. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to be when you grow up? Doctor. You means what you gonna do? What you gonna be? Doctor. Okay. Hey, get it. What you gonna do? What you gonna be? Another doctor. What? Another doctor. I'm not a doctor. For you. For you. I don't know. You practice baseball. Even you practice baseball, I don't know. The one man, I don't know. Okay. Hey, Michael. What do you wanna do? What you wanna be? Engineer. Okay, I'm Michel. What do you wanna do? What do you wanna be? Professional. Swimmer. Swimming. Oh, professional swimming. 
swimmer, professional swimmer. Or you can be an Olympic gold medalist. So did you guys catch something? So what is the answer to my question? Everyone answered how. They answered what job they want to have, their career. So the finest vine that God, this wonderful plan He gave to you, do you think He made, chose a job for you and then created you? So many people, based on God's plan for you, you with the worldly concept, you define your life. That's why you minimize God's picture and yourself. You're restricting your life, li limiting your life, and you cannot do God's amazing things He's planned for you. So the question that God is asking you, He's not asking you to pick a job for your future. He's asking what kind of person do you want to be, ought to be. So that job, no matter what you do, depending on the person behind the job, the result changes. So if the president is a non-believer, if the president is someone who does LGBTQ, what kind of world is going to unfold? Second Peter, uh, Second Peter, chapter three, verse eleven. So, what manner of persons ought you to be? So, the world is going to end. It's going to come to an end. In that case, what manner of persons ought you to be? So, what do they say here? It says, "One man of persons ought you to be, not ought you to do." Just to be, not to do. So, Pastor Kim couldn't understand this either, and he didn't know about this issue. So, even there's two people that said they want to be a doctor. So, he said I was gonna. Pastor Kim said I wanted to be a doctor. So he uh, he he collapsed. He collapsed mm -hmm. after saying doctor, doctor, doctor. Because he didn't know what plan God had in his heart for me. He couldn't see the picture God had for him. God wasn't telling him to not be a doctor. But what kind of God's picture is in you, that has to be it has to be done first so that you know you can see God's picture and plan for you in the later on. Because you focus on your life like that, that's why when you when you sum up your life, the if you don't know why he gave you the finest vine, and if you don't think that it is the finest vine, so then they might say, rather than grapes, pears are better. Rather than grapes, apples are better. Then the fact that you are a grape or a vine, you're going to not like it. You're not going to be interested in it. So that's not God's plan and picture for you. So he didn't know about this either. So he had a hard time for a really long time. Had a, yeah. So God's picture is more infinite beyond your thinking there's more ways more paths and he wants to give you more things many things because he created everything and you he wants to work in a different level for you you have to understand this so that your life can move into a different way otherwise so you want to be a doctor do you become a doc do you study a lot? If you want to become a doctor, you cannot just do normal amount of study. You have to do you have to study for over ten years. After high school, you have to study for ten more years. And you have to do intern and then resident. So it's gonna be over ten years just to become a doctor. 
Those who don't like to study, it's hard for you to endure that time. You have to have that studying heart. That means you have to have a research heart. Are you interested in it? So it's not just a you know simple picture. So why did they choose that? It's because you like it, but also the most shocking reason is money. Because it's easy to make money, but it's actually not easy to get money. Is it easier to make money from making YouTube videos, or is it is it easier to make money from doing YouTube videos or doing surgeries? And you know, you have to do everything when there's an accident, or you have to take care of people. Which one is easier, YouTube videos or doctor, to make money? That's why all of that system is being shaken right now. Why? Because of human thinking. So God is the creator. So when he gives you a new idea or he downloads something new for you, then the worldly people cannot endure it. You have to know the, what kind of life God wants you to lead, and if you do all into that. So when you sum up in front of God, what did you do before coming? Yes, you should say, I fulfilled what you planned for me, Lord. So you have to fulfill what God has given to us so that we can glorify the Father. So that's the first you know, scene between the Father and the Son. The assignment that you gave to me, I fulfilled it, and then I glorified the Father. So he thought that if he studied well and he was first place, he can glorify God. That's how he learned. That's how he grew up. And his parents also, you know, um, emphasized that. So he couldn't endure being second place. Because if he was second place, then he thought that, you know, you wasn't glorifying God if you weren't first place. So if he got one problem wrong, he couldn't go home. Because then he's going to get in trouble. He's going to get scolded. And it's going to cause a big mess. And then at his, when he was young, you know, he heard that not becoming first place would not glorify God. But do you think that's actually the case? Do you think God is without mercy? He's not. So the problem is, based on your thing pattern, your value system, if it's according to the Bible, when you ex it's not you accepted the Father's heart, you didn't accept the Father's heart, in the world that you live in, you think that this is good, you think this is better, you turned it into God's thing, so you turn your thing into God's thing, so that's why you by yourself fall into a dilemma. So the most happiest, joyful, and the most confident life is in the work that He gives you when you go all into that and you faithfully do the work that He gave you. Then that's the greatest joy. That's the most hope. You know what life is. And you cannot compare this work with others. Many people try to compare with others. That's why there's problems. So when Jesus picked his disciples, did he compare and then picked out all the people? I mean, where do you think he should have went? He should have went to the Pharisees or the Sadducees. So those are the two groups that, you know, always showed was against Jesus, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Because, you know, they thought that he was going to pick the disciples from the, that group. But God's concept isn't in that, whether who's better or not. God's concept is in you know who you are. So when you have a job or you have some kind of career, it doesn't matter about that. It, when you know who you are, then through you, in your position, in your territory, in your category, it can change. You're, you can change your surroundings. You're the light of the world. You understand? Can you lay down your own thinking? Can you give it up? So this is the hardest part. 
So many people, when you tell them to follow God's calling, they why do they reject it? It's because they think, oh, I cannot do what I want to do. So Pastor Kim did the, thought the same thing. You know, he wanted to become a doctor, but yet did I have to have to give up all of that? And if he called me, what do I have to do? I do I have to become a pastor since he called me? So because of that, he didn't want to do it. He thought he had to be a pastor when God called him, but that's not the case. But the Bible says, whether you're a pastor, apostle, anything, God determined it. And no matter what position, what job, wherever you are to everyone, so following God's power that he has given to each one of us, you can spread it out to the world. You can make his kingdom come onto this earth. He's going to use you in the position that you are in. So when Peter stood up and started teaching, you know, they probably didn't like it. You know, they thought he was nothing, but he was boldly, more than what he, they studied about the glory. You know, he was speaking more clearly. They couldn't find any gaps. And no matter how much they prayed, you know, no one was healed. But then he was able to heal a 38-year-old, someone who was diseased for 38 years. So they couldn't say anything. And they know that he followed Jesus. So they cannot deny that that power came from Jesus, so they couldn't say anything against Peter. Do you agree? So then your life's purpose, whether what job you pick, that's not first. So your life's goal, are you going to work together with God? Or, or, that should be the first thing. That should be your priority so that you can start to move forward in your life. So if you're connected to God, there will be an infinite download, wisdom, revelation. God created everything. So everything in heaven, through you, He wants to send it out to this world. So don't you think He's looking for those people? He's look, don't you think He's looking for people with those kind of heart? So through you, wouldn't He download a new power to you? Through you. So, you know, swimming is only through the water, but you could probably swim through the air too. And he downloads his power through you. So why? Liquid, so the dynamics algorithm, the algorithm for, you know, liquid and air is the same. So space dynamic, so all the dynamics are the same. So when you're all into God, so you're not you're just not swimming in the water, but you could also start flying in the air. You don't know how God's going to use you if God does it. So you have to change your thinking so that you can change your the your path. So if you want to change your thinking, so the first the first step is important. So let's see if Jesus lived like that as well. So let's go to Jesus Christ's life. So Psalms 40 from verse 6 to 8. So how did Jesus live his life on earth? So sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. So this is the book written about Jesus Christ. It's the book written about Jesus Christ. It was revealed through David, and it was written about Jesus. You know, they tried to restore it by sacrificing beasts and all of that, but they it wasn't enough, satisfying, so they, he sent Jesus Christ. So you should go down, what are you going to do on earth? So it's recorded in the Bible, what Jesus was going to come down to earth and do. So his response was, yes, I will. I will do according to the Father's will. So the Holy Spirit heard too, and he said, I'll go too, and I'll help you. He'll help Jesus to fulfill the Father's purpose. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 7 to 10. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you did not. 
So what does it say? He came to do, he, it says, to do your will, O God, in verse 7. Because just what the worldly, earthly sacrifice, it's not satisfying to the Father. So it says, here I am. I have come to do the will of the Father. So what about you? So Jesus came to this earth to do the will of God. So it, it's already recording the Bible how Jesus was going to live on earth. So then how about you? So is your plan for your life recorded somewhere? Where is it recorded? So David didn't know that, but he didn't know. So what did it say in Psalms 139? So you have a lot of thoughts for me. So Psalms 139. So he couldn't, even if I don't understand your plan and I fail, you know, you might change your plan A to plan B. So then he's going to restore it so that it can go back to the original. And if he makes a mistake, then it's going to be plan C, plan D. So that even if you make a mistake, God's original plan, there's so many plans that he has for you. So no matter what mistake you make, he can make you come alive again and he'll make you do his plan. So he was so moved and he had to thank God. He said, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. Because, you know, he made a lot of mistakes. And then it seems that my life didn't have much value. It was worthless. But you recorded in your book that before I was born for, for Israel, you you'll be the king uh, and then recorded as the blood, original bloodline of Jesus. So David was moved. So all the suffering, all the hard things he had to go through, he realized that it was for this plan that God had for him so that he came more before God. So the most important thing is, so in his book, our, our life is also recorded in his book. Do you believe? So in Psalms 138 at the end, what does this say? The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. So everything related to you, His plan for you, He's going to fulfill it no matter what. But if there's a problem, it's the problem that you don't ask God who, how you should live as. So parents, you know, they pray. So before the children were born, there's some people that know how their children are supposed to live according to God's will. And there's some people who know from the mother's room, just like Samuel or John the Baptist. Some people from there, they didn't listen when, you know, they didn't listen to the, the parents' words when they were younger, like Moses. So then they wandered for 40 years. There's people who started at the age of 80. So there's a lot of differences, but each person so you have to trust that God has the best, the finest plan for you. Then now you're starting at the starting point. But many people don't believe this truth. That's why their life gets messed up and broken. After that, they seek God. That's why they start looking for him too late. But you know, even if you know, even if that's the case, starting from where you're messed up, he's going to fulfill his original plan, so he's going to start that process. So what did Jesus say in Galatians chapter 4? You know, he was born as the son of God, but until the fullness of time, he had to go through certain process, and then he had to, until he was saying that you're enough, you are my son, then he can cry out, Abba, Father, and then he'll be an heir of God. So it's the same thing. So he called us and we're born again. That means you're going to start to fulfill my plan that I have for you. That's what born again is. So on, it's only going to be revealed to those who hold on to this and seek God. If you don't ask him, seek him, then it's not going to happen. So some people, they think, oh, a prophet will probably tell me what I have to do. But when you ask, then a prophet will come and give you confirmation. If you don't seek him, even if they tell you, you're not going to believe it. So that's why God will not speak to you. So only to those who seek God, those who believe in him, those who love him, 
everything will work together for their good. So by the revelation of the Spirit, you'll clearly know more about who you are. So from the starting point, what kind of process starts here? Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders this, hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So when those who, those who know what their calling was, when they were born, when they die, what would they say? So he, he came to do the will of the Father, and then what did he say? As he was fulfilling it on the cross, he proclaimed, it is finished. Everything is finished. So everything, if everything is finished, then what does he have to do when he goes to heaven? What's remaining? Just a reward. So honor and glory, authority, power. So what does it say in the Bible? So Jesus gave up everything, and until he died, he obeyed the word and will of God. So now God, all of the kingdom, all the power, the glory, he's going to give it to his son, so that everything, you, when you confess that Jesus is the Lord, and then you know they will bow before him. So when you pass away, when you leave this world, just like Jesus, do you want to say, oh, children, it's, it is finished? Everyone, it is finished to you. So through this, it is finished. There's only going to be inheritance. Do you want to pass away like that? Or are you just going to suddenly pass away? Do you want to say, it is finished, or just suddenly leave the world? Is it too early to think about dying too young? You never know. So no matter how much you deny it, there's a time where you're going to be born and a time where you're going to pass away. He really likes this verse, Hebrews chapter. So, so dying is already set, and then there's going to be judgment at the end. So when you are born, you know, you were born with the purpose and God's will, but when you pass away, you have to sum up your life. So that's why after you pass away, in order to sum up, you're going to stand in the judgment seat if you're going to stand there and say, it is finished, I glorify your name, are you going to say that? Or are you going to say, please give me one more chance. Let me go back one more chance. Are you going to, do you think he's going to say, oh, go back to the world? If there's that word in the Bible, do you think people are going to risk their life to serve God? Do you know what kind of the words that the Korean people use a lot? You know, it's already over in this world. If I'm ever born again, can you be born again? You know, you can't really do that. So it's not it's not possible. So, you know, like being reborn again. But you know, they said, "Oh, if I'm ever reborn again, I'm going to marry you again, or I'm not going to marry you again." You know, they say that. But in order to live a life full of confidence, boldness, you have to believe what kind of purpose, what kind of identity you were born with. And you have to seek the calling and plan that God has for you and seek God and ask God. So that's why the starting point in Hebrews chapter 12, there's three let us, there's three let us in NIV. Other versions, there's only let us and then let us and the other thing. But when you move forward, everyone is the same. When there's someone who already lived, you know, a life similar to you, then you can use them as a model. It's easier to follow them, right? So there's a great cloud of witnesses that's surrounding you. Who? Those who were born before you. And they were born before you, and they, you know, they already obeyed God's word. They lived according to His will, and they're in heaven. So they're alive because they had eternal life. So they, as a cloud of witness, is surrounding you and is manifesting right now and is helping you. 
It's in the Bible. He is the God of the living, not the dead. It's Abra- the God of Abraham, I- Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So in your life too, there's witnesses that will help you. And you know, some people, you know, you know, Abraham might be in your dream, Joseph might be in your dream, or some, you know, your father will be in your dream. Why? Because of your weakness. In order to encourage you, it's recorded in the Bible. So to, the first starting point, the first let us, let us store off everything. So you have to get rid of something. So in order to start off, in, to have to start at the starting point, you have to throw off anything that hinders you, that easily gets messed up, easily areas that entangles or collapses. You have to throw away those issues. And when you believe in Jesus, when you are born again and you confess, what is the first thing that God's going to start dealing with? Is your past, everything that you're bound, everything that you made mistakes, everything you failed, He's going to clean up everything. But people don't like this. They cannot understand this area the most, and then they get upset and angry. Why? Because they have so many unfairness and damage, so they don't know the truth, and they only have the lies, the deception through some kind of situation. All the li- you're holding onto the lies that Satan put inside of you. So wh- why only me? Why do I have to live this kind of life? You know, they believe in Jesus. They're living such a fun life. But why am I having so many hardships? So why only me? Why do I only I have to sacrifice? They don't like to sacrifice. Why? Because it feels unfair. You know, I already feel like I lived an unfair life, but I have to sacrifice again, so it's even more unfair. But is that really sacrificing? So everything that you're bound to, through that, He wants to get rid of those binds. So this is God's love picture for you, but you don't want to accept it. So God is love. Do you believe it? So in God's plan, He's not trying to harm you or hurt you. It's your thinking. Because you're not all into God, you're holding on to His worldly purpose. That's why it's so hard. It's tormenting. You know, you're having one leg here, one leg here. You're having a double life. That's why it's getting dilemma split. So you're saying, why are you uh, stretching me, splitting me? So, so Jesus went through all that suffering, shame, hardships. He overcame everything in order to save me, you. When you believe and accept that that He did all of that for me to make you new, He wants to get rid of all your mistakes, all your problems. Isn't it just to say thank you, Jesus? You know, today we sang, thank you, Jesus, for the blood. So with Jesus' blood, then every issue is done. It's not that we try to do something, but just because we believe in this, we confess this, we say thank you, Jesus. Then everything in our life will be released, loosed. So then, everything has to be bind and loose. He's gonna do it for us, but you're trying to release it in your own way, try to get rid of your way. That's why it gets even more entangled. You're trying to untangle the thread by yourself, but it gets even more tangled, tangled. That's why he just you just cut it. If you cut it, you end up cutting something you're not supposed to cut. Because it's so entangled, you cut it, but then you cut up. You end up cutting something you're not supposed to cut. So then you cut them. You like you cut off people. You say, "I'm not going to see you ever again," to another person. But what if God were to say, "I don't want to see your face anymore," in that darkness? So what? How does God restore you? First, seek my face. As long as my light is shining upon you, there's going to be grace. There's going to be a new way, and you'll be able to see that He's helping you. But if you don't do that, if His face will be hidden and it'll be turned away, you'll be filled with darkness. No matter how much you say you have wisdom, you're only just going to wander in the valley of the shadow, and you cannot come out, and you're going to be blind. So he's teaching you a very easy way. So you have to leave that. So to Abraham, to someone who was worshiping idols, making idols, and he said, "Throw away all that and go to the land that I have called you to." So you know he was living a pretty good life. He was making good money. He had a lot of money, but he gave all of that and left the land. So only Abraham, he only God told Abraham to live by himself. But then you know the relatives kind of wanted to go together. But then God said, "No, thank you." So God's calling 
it, do you have the will to you know give up your own family your relatives somewhere to me your mother rather than your mother father those who love me more than your mother father siblings it's so it's your choice so the first part is the hardest why because many people according to god's call they cannot understand god's calling you understand it according to your own human thinking so giving it up doesn't mean god's telling you to cut it off forever but when you become new and until you're make whole unless you're separated unless you're set aside from them your life will be messed up and mixed up and then more broken that's why he's you know setting you apart from them for a while so when you're built up according to his way then then god will send you back because you can break off the yoke the chains and so then everything can be restored so you have to understand this uh you, you don't understand this picture so 20 years ago in kailua so he separated someone saying don't focus on them right now so then they said that pastor kim you're not acknowledging god's love we're you know living very well with each other we're cooperating very well we have a good relationship why are you separating us so they're eating drinking together what are they doing one person they're like backbiting talking bad about somebody so that's a misunderstanding of god's love because your concept, your wounds, your pain, you're doing it according to your thinking. That's why That's why it easily entangles us. That's the area that is, you have to get out of that area that easily entangles you. You have to cut that off. So it's not an easy choice. So Abraham chose this. That's why God started his processing. But this concept is the same. So Jesus gave, had to give up his throne in heaven and come down to earth. Uh, first Peter chapter 2 so first Peter chapter 2 I think verse 1 therefore laying aside all malice all deceit hypocrisy envy and all evil speaking as newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious coming to him as to a living so if you want to do well, do good, then you have to throw away, lay aside all of these first. If you want to grow up spiritually, if you want to fulfill God's plan, then your concept that you have, your value system, your without abandoning all, the, throwing away all of that, you cannot go into these new things. You agree? So Jacob tried to hide and go to the end, but then everything got exposed so he only loves Rachel but it had to be revealed exposed that it was all a lie when he threw it away laid aside all of it when he acknowledged it when he acknowledged that I am Jacob the new choice came which is Israel so it took Jacob over 20 years to notice so for 20 years he did everything in vain so just like uh, Pasioso's mom said, for 20 years ago, you know, all of his complaints, all she had that, you know, she finally realized it 20 years later, you know, in the Ten Commandments, she finally realized why God stopped her back then. So don't make any other image be besides me. So she was trying to major in making, you know, those holy pictures, icons, idols, but God intervened. And so everything got robbed, everything, everything she had was stolen. So that's why she, it seemed like she had to forcefully give it up. But she had all that bitterness. So she was unfair and she was angry. She was blaming others. But he, she realized now that that was God's love and it was to protect her. She realized that on Friday. And then she reported, she told it to Pastor Yosef on when. She was reading the Bible. And then she realized Old Testament News Monday. She, she realized now that, oh, oh, you shouldn't make any other image beside me, beside God. So even if you were just born into a Christian family, you go to Sunday school, you know, you would learn about the Ten Commandments. You know, you would know the Ten Commandments, but why didn't she know it back then? Because she was trying to do her own way, what she wanted to do, her success. You're trying to do it in your, in your way, then you cannot see you're blinded. Then you get confused. So when that scale of the eyes is taken off and you want to have the freedom that everything that's yoking you tempting you you have to cut it off 
So just like Michelle, she publicly, it's not easily, but at that age, you know, she proclaimed to her teacher and she got free. Michelle these days, when she worships, look at her mouth. She starts to worship and sing out loud. That's why God's moving her forward in more processing. So there was another test. So on the Christmas day, there was a party. It's the same as Sunday. And then she confessed to me earlier. She said, before my mom, by faith, I'm going to choose God. She's not going to go to that Christmas party. So that's a great breakthrough today. So that was Michelle's breakthrough today, this morning. Oh, there was a party today, but she didn't go. She came here. So there's going to be a greater party, a heavenly party waiting for you. Let's see how much uh, smarter Michelle gets. So we have to have witnesses so that we can believe it. So it's very simple. So I said it earlier. If, as long as you say, I love you, then all these things will be broken off. Just that one word, I love you. It's going to break off everything that you couldn't get love for. You're going to become free. So I love you. Then you're going to say, I love you too. So when, as long as he says, I love you too, then you're going to be so free. All that unfairness will be gone. So the first step is the hardest. Why? Because it feels unfair. You're angry. And the life that you live seems sorrowful. But I said you have to pass through this step. Okay? So the second one. So when you pass through this step, the most important thing, uh, the important thing after that is says, let us run the race. The race that God has set before you. You have to start the race for your life. So this is your spiritual journey for each person. According to God's calling, you got to go to different training and process. But it's not the race that you choose. It's according to God's calling that He set before you. So you follow that way. So it says, let us... Um, Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, verse uh, uh, 1. Hebrews 12, verse 1. So there's a race that God has set before us. So whether you walk, whether you r run, whether you ride a car, you still have to pass through that journey, that race. So it's not something that you determine. So the first thing is a step. The second one is also choice. So God's kingdom is choice after choice after choice are you going to listen to his word or are you going to not listen to it are you going to obey his word so tim last sunday he publicly forgave his teachers but then he asked a oh, one week passed but nothing really happened so he asked again did you really uh, forgive with the center of your heart the focus of your heart did you really forgive with all your heart he said not really so what does the bible say if you forgive with all your heart, so he did it again from the bottom of your heart. So he did it again yesterday. So God will prove his heart. If he really did it from the bottom of heart, he knows that this is the truth of God and that his life will be free, then his life will start to become more free. So suddenly the teachers will give you so much favor. Their attitude is going to change towards you. They're good. God will give you the wisdom revelation to make you smart so that you can do everything well. Do you believe it, Tim? Yes, Lord. Do you believe it? Yeah. So there's another example. Let us race. So let us let run us the race. race. So running the race, you have to run in the the your lane. If you run in another person's lane. It's not going to be good. So that's why there's no need for you to compare with others. You compare with others. That's why your life is not getting moving forward. You're going to have jealousy. You're going to try to bother others to prevent them from running. Then you think it's better for me not, it's better that I'm not running. And it seems like you're not moving forward. So you seem like you're looking better than them because you're bothering them and they're not moving forward either. So what you see is not reality. So it looks better, but it's not. So let us run the race. You guys are running two different races, so don't compete. 
don't and don't be envious or jealous. Do not try to bother them. Bother each other. Help each other. Just come in. Okay? The easy thing can do. Not get angry. You have to throw out first. You have to throw it away first to run the race. So, are you going to run the race with all of these things on your back, or you want to run the race with nothing on your back? You know, they, the athletic shirt, they think of the air resistance, and even the hairstyle, they think of the air resistance because they try to run their best. You know, even worldly people apply this. They're going to get rid of everything that they don't want, unnecessary things that cause resistance. So if you run and run the race in the right way, you know, I have to make money, I have to be famous, I have to have spiritual power, I have to have money. You don't need any of that. So you cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. So if you serve God, then the treasures will just follow. Because you don't believe in this, that's why you have one leg here, one leg there, living a double life. So you have to run the race. So the third let us... Let us fix your eyes on Jesus. So your goal should always be Jesus Christ. You have to look towards Jesus Christ so that no matter what you do, you won't go out of course. So when you look at Jesus, so all of, you wouldn't fall into the devil's like entanglement lies towards you. If you look towards Jesus, in any chance, there's going in every opportunity. There's going to be a, the way of life. Does games help your life? No. So you, you want to be You probably cannot do it hundred percent. If you cannot do it hundred percent, then you have to run the race with that load okay. burden. So your heart may not 100% agree, but you said it with your mouth, so there's going to be breakthrough. So this area that's this area is easily entangled in my life, which is games. It tempts me all the time. But I'm going to choose. You will handle this part, this issue. So cut it off everything. So it's a different dimension of your life. So your focus, it's not on Jesus. That's why there's a problem. Your focus goes otherwise, elsewhere. Do you know how it turns? So you believe in Jesus together, but even if he lives like that, even though he's a believer too, but he's living very well. You know, it seems like they have a lot of money. They can do what they want to do. They're living their life. You know, God lets them be. They're not. God's not intervening. That's why they think they're living a good life. But God, those who God love, you know, will God intervene or is he going to just throw them away? Okay. I think you want to just end me all the time because you were sometimes doing really good. All the time. Yes, little baby. All the time I need you. Did you have you ever asked? Did you ask him to so try right now? You know that you want him to take care of you all the time. So, Dad, I want you to take care of me all the time. So, ask him. Anything about oh yeah, not good life. 
He thinks you're living okay. You don't need my help. You don't need my help. He thinks that you don't need it. You don't need anything from him. So you have to ask. Even if you think he's not looking at you outwardly, but you will still believe that he's taking care of you. He was. You feel like he's not, but you'll you'll trust that he is. Yes. So Jesus Christ. Uh, he was all naked. He was by all of his disciples. Everyone, you know, he was he was stripped away. He was naked, and then he was nailed to the cross. That scene. They turn. That'll be God's, because of God's will, His purpose. He went. He endured that shame, and He overcame it, and He gave us the eternal redemption. In that case, did you choose Jesus? Are you someone who chose Jesus? Then what will you give to Him? It's on Christmas. You like to receive gifts, right? Christmas is whose birthday? But you're trying to receive a gift on Jesus' birthday. You have to give him a gift. So Christmas is the day you're supposed to give something to God, to Jesus. You know, he doesn't want that for that purpose, but when you give your heart to him, then your life's goal and purpose will change. So let's just do a more. First uh, Peter, chapter two. So you have to come to him as a living stone, and he will treat you as living stones too. So, First Peter, chapter two. So then you'll be a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. So a royal priest, you'll be his, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So that's 9 and 10, verse 9 and 10. So, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. His own special people who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So first Peter chapter two verse nine. In that case, if you go according to this, then around you where you speak, what you show God his glory, his light, his power because of it, many people will be free and they will run to Jesus as well. Do you believe? So this is Christmas, the gift that you will give to him. Okay. So three let us. Do you remember? What is the first one? So number one, throw off everything that hinders the sin that easily entangles. What's the second let us? Run the race. So run the race with perseverance. Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12. So the last one is, let us fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't compare with others. According to what Jesus did for you, you also love others. So you choose to love others as well. So, so follow me. Here I am. I have come to do your will. I have come to do your will. So here I am. I have come to do your will. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I got along. So we got to do what to do. So the meaning of participating in this communion, you have to know it has a great meaning, great importance. So you're going to live as this, co this covenant people with him.
So those who do not eat of my flesh and blood, you will not have eternal life. And those who eat and drink my flesh and blood will dwell with me, and they will have eternal life. That's what the Bible says. Okay. So to those who dwell with Him, you can seek, you can ask for anything. So those who understand His meaning and come before Him, whenever you ask Him, you know He, as He promised, He will release it to us. So He's going to proclaim this covenant. So Isaiah chapter fifty-three, but He was wounded for our transgressions; He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray; we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So all of your sin, iniquity, transgression is not upon you anymore. Jesus took it upon Himself. Say hallelujah. So God wants you to remember that. So. The same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me." In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes." So the church that he bought with his blood, that authority and power, you will use it. So in the name of Jesus, I find, you know, death, fear, rejection, poverty, corruption, control, manipulate, rebellion, witchcraft, divine, lust, shame, lying, any false accusation. Completely, I find in people's love in Jesus. And I will show heavenly treasure, heavenly blessing, earthly blessing, healthy, wealthy, finance, relationship blessing, everything is torn. No more bondage, no more you can change your life. In the name of Jesus, proclaim his body and his birth. Save our life. Let us in power. Every curse, cut it up. No more in my life. Great power and glory and anointing, healing, revelation, wisdom, understanding. Everything downward for everyone in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. 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 Okay, come together. Okay, I'm turning it off.